Hi, I'm Alan Jaeger. And I'm Jim Vatcher. First of all, we'd like to thank you for purchasing our J-Band. Our goal is for you to have years of productive use from your J-Band and that you use it in the safest way possible. Before starting your J-Band routine, please be sure that your J-Band clip is securely fastened to an immovable anchor point. If you are using a screw eye, eye bolt, or something similar to it as an anchor point, it is imperative that this anchor point is securely fastened and will not release. Do not take any chances with your anchor point by anchoring the J-bands to something that you are not sure is secure. If the clip releases and comes back at you, it can cause serious bodily injury or even be fatal. A chain link fence is a great option, especially where the links intersect, but be sure to double check that the fence is sturdy and in good shape. After clipping in to secure your anchor point, make sure that your carabiner clip is never aligned with your head, face, or neck when doing any of these exercises. It is important to note that the J-band should not be stretched more than one to one and a half feet of its original length. This is a very safe distance when doing the exercises. If you feel like you may need more resistance with a particular exercise, increase your repetitions from 25 to 35 rather than overstretch the J-band. Remember, we are targeting small muscles, so less tension with higher repetitions is an optimal way to perform these exercises and safer than pulling the J-band too tightly, which can also cause you to muscle up and put more stress on the J-band. In the very unlikely event that the tubing breaks at this distance, it would have much less force or recoiling effect if the J-band is not overstretched. Before each workout with your J-band, be sure to take a close look at it to see if there is any cracking or cuts on the band. After years of use and being out in the sun, the band can start showing signs of wear and tear. Also, sometimes the J-bands will get stepped on by cleats, which can also cause an unsuspecting cut or small hole in the J-band. If you notice any cuts or cracking, especially near the clip, replace the J-bands immediately. After using the J-band, Put it back in your bag, away from cleats, and out of the sun. Leaving the J-bands hanging in the sun when not in use can cause premature cracking and wear and tear on the J-band. Now that we've gone through the safety precautions of the J-band, we'd actually like to demonstrate the proper way to use the J-band safely. So now that we've gone through all the safety procedures, uh, we'd actually like to demonstrate the J-band itself, go through each exercise, show you where the clip goes, and make sure that we're doing everything possible to keep the clip uh, away from recoiling and, and hitting us maybe in the neck or face area. So uh, that's what we're gonna do right now. This is China McCarney. Glad to have China with us today. You ready to get rolling? Yep. Okay, here we go. So now with exercise one, let's first talk about the clip. Uh, it would seem like logical to put it around the chain link fence uh, where, where there's a single strand, but actually if you put it to where the chain link fence meets, it's much stronger and much safer and much sturdier. So make sure you again put the carabiner clip where the chain link fence intersects. Now with exercise one, it's called over the head forearm extension. Again, all these exercises are on our brochure, um, which you can download right from our website. And again, if you notice that the clip is uh, basically in a position to where, as we go through the first exercise, if anything unforeseen happened and the rubber tubing actually did break, uh, the clip would actually fly off very clear of the head. So again, safety is rule number one. The second thing we want you to notice is, is that the length of the J-band uh, is not being stretched more than about a foot to a foot and a half. So if China needed to maybe uh, get more out of the workout per se, instead of increasing uh, the, the distance away from uh, the fence, all he'd do is add some extra repetitions. Great job, China. Now exercise two, um, the clip again will remain where it's at. Uh, this is called simply side stretching. So go ahead, China. And again, the two things we're gonna keep focusing on is one, uh, how the clip is never in alignment with the head or the face or the neck. And two, that we're not overstretching the rubber tubing. Okay? Excellent. Uh, exercise number three, uh, these are called diagonals. Now, now we are going to move the clip down for the next three exercises. So again, uh, the clip is going to go down to about belly button height. And again, notice how China puts the clip 
around the chain link fence where it intersects. That's the strongest point. Okay, so now this is exercise number three, uh, diagonal stretching. And once again, you'll notice now that uh, if anything were to happen and the tubing were to break, uh, the clip, again, will not be in alignment with the head. That's going to be our constant focus throughout the workout. Okay? And that the band, of course, is not being overstretched. Great job. Now, exercise number four, uh, these are forward flies. Uh, so again, the clip will remain where it's at, which is at about the lower back. And again, channel will go through the forward fly exercise. And again, uh, he's, even though he, he could get out further if he really wanted to, uh, he's staying in a place uh, where the band is under control and he's not overstretching the band and putting it in a vulnerable position to break. And again, the clip is at a nice low position at lower back height. Great job, Chana. Exercise number five, these are reverse flies. Again, the clip does not move. Uh, again, it's about belly button height. Chana's going to get a little bit lower. But again, even in the unforeseen event that the tubing would break, uh, the clip again would hit him somewhere in the lower part of the body. Again, we constantly want to remind you to keep the clip away from the neck or the face or the head. Awesome. Great job. Okay, now we're going to go to the single arm specific exercises. Uh, this is exercise six. Uh, this is internal rotation. Uh, the clip will just move slightly from belly button height down to about waist height. Great. And then we're going to go over to this side and we'll do internal rotation. And once again, uh, clip is in a safe position. Uh, China is staying totally under control. He could get out much further. He's strong enough to do it. Uh, he'll up his reps if he needed to. Okay? Nice job. Now exercise number seven is external rotation, also at hip height. Clip doesn't change. Same thing. Clip's in a safe position. Uh, China is working the exercises. Again, the focus is on uh, staying under control, not overstretching the J-band. Nice. Okay, great. Now exercise eight and nine, these are called elevated exercises, internal and external rotation. Exercise number eight is elevated internal rotation. The clip will go to just about shoulder height. Again, notice how the clip is being hooked at the strongest point where the chain link intersects. And again, we'll come to this side now. Uh, very, very important to note on these next three exercises, uh, technically the next four exercises, that the clip is in alignment with what we call uh, the home plate area as if you were in the batter's box. And what this does is, if, again, the unforeseen event, if the surgical tubing were to break, you can see that the clip would be in alignment with the elbow. Again, he's clear of the body, it's clear of the neck, clear of the face, and clear of the head. Okay? Awesome, China. Great job. Okay, exercise number nine uh, is elevated external rotation. Again, please note that the clip is in this home plate area and that his body would be in the, in the batter's box again. Um, again, notice that the, the, the work is under control. He's not overstretching the J-band. Again, you don't need that much resistance to get a great workout if you're doing the technique right. Great job. Uh, the last two exercises for, for baseball players, uh, reverse throwing and forward throwing. The clip is going to again move now back down to about waist height. And again, once you'll notice that uh, we're hooking it around the strongest point of the fence where the chain link intersects. Uh, same principle, the chain, the, the carabiner itself would be that home plate area. China would be in the, uh, the imaginary batter's box. And this is called reverse throwing. Uh, once again, we keep on reminding you that if the unforeseen event, if the band were to break or the clip were to, were to release or uncoil, um, this would be clear of his torso. Obviously, you want to keep it clear of the neck, face, and head as well. And fantastic. And then finally, exercise number uh, 11, forward throwing. We will take the wrist cuff off. We will put it back together. The clip will remain exactly where it's at. Again, rule number one is, is that the clip will now be in alignment with home plate with China in the batter's box, as we've done with the last three exercises, as China goes through the forward throwing motion. You'll notice once again that he's under control. He's not overstretching the J-band. 
Uh, again, we know from doing this for a lot of years that the, the, the main work of this is, is through repetition, not through overstretching the J-band. And finally, for the last time, if the clip again were to come from off the fence or off of whatever you have it fastened to, or he happened to, we had the unfortunate event of the band breaking, again, the clip would release and it would be clear of his torso, clear of his neck, clear of his head, clear of his face. Great job. So what we want to do now is just to remind you that the, the J-band exercises are really designed for safety first. Uh, obviously we're going to get a lot of health, a lot of endurance, a lot of strength, and a lot of benefits from doing this workout. Um, but again, uh, having the clip as safely secure as possible is crucial and always putting the clip in a position that in the unforeseen event that it either comes off what, it, what it's fastened to or if the tubing actually broke that the clip would never be in danger of coming anywhere near the neck, face, or head. Um, so thanks again for stopping by. We hope this has been uh, really helpful and informative to you. And remember to be safe first and foremost. Thanks.